All right, we have a 1991 Buick Century with a 3300, and what we're trying to do is a case study on direction and what you do with a no start. It's an intermittent no start. When it warms up, it shuts down and does a restart. And one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was ignition designs. And this is what's called a bypass ignition system. And so very briefly, what you have is a crank sensor signal that feeds into an ignition control module and that ICM controls the coil. So during cranking, it's a direct flow from the crank sensor to the ignition coil. The computer's not involved at all. From there, it takes that crank signal and it sends it to the uh, computer. In this case, it's an ECM. ECM, PCM, same thing. This is known as the reference wire. And then the computer sends a signal back to the ICM, is known as the EST wire. So the system design would be cranking the ICMs in control, and with the car running, the ECMs in control. This is important to understand when you're dealing with no starts, as far as are you missing spark, are you missing injection pulse, what direction are you going, and knowing that this vehicle will have spark without the computer is important to understand. So the, this case study, what we're dealing with, is a vehicle that has intermittent, it's an intermittent no start, and it has no injection pulse and good spark. So with that scenario, what we know is at least the crank sensor is good. And we know that that portion of the ICM is good that takes that crank sensor signal is controlling the coil. What we don't know is, is this reference circuit sending a pulse to the computer for piston position and RPM? The computer is going to use that signal not only to control the EST, but also to control the fuel injectors. So when you're dealing with a, sit a situation like this, what we want to start with, recreate the problem. It's an intermittent no start where we're losing injection pulse. We want to make sure that we're not losing this reference signal. To elaborate a little bit more on this system and the circuit design, our ignition module is right here. There's three coils that are set up right here. Each of these coils need to be fired in sequence. So this ignition module needs to know which one is which. And that's where our crankshaft signal comes in. Our crank signal, there's two signals on this crank sensor. And actually, I can show you a little bit of a detail on that. This being a crank pulley, there's a 1x signal, that's this outer ring, and there's a 3x signal, the inner ring. These would be used to coordinate which cylinder's which on the crankshaft signal. Um, it's not good enough to just have three evenly spaced inner notches, which would represent each cylinder at top dead center. Every inside notch represents a cylinder at top dead center. This is a V6 engine, it's a four-stroke engine. So there would be six square waves per 720 degrees of crank rotation. Every 360 degrees, we fire three cylinders. The next 360 degrees, we fire the next three cylinders. So each of these pulses would represent a cylinder at top dead center. Okay? From that point, that's not good enough to know which coil to fire. There's three coils on this design. So this these signals being fed into the ICM, ICM controlling each of those individual coil packs with three different drivers, that's not good enough, this bottom signal, to know where to start in sequence. That's the need for the top signal. This 1x is going to coordinate and tells the module where to start firing the coils in sequence, and now we're good to go. So we need both signals on this. This will be our sync signal. This is your piston position and RPM. That's what the crank sensor signal does. Feeds into the ICM. The ICM is going to condition those signals, fire the coils, and also send one of those to the computer for injection control and for RPM measurement piston position. Pause. Okay, so from there, two crank signals. You see it says number one cylinder output. This would be your 1x signal. That's this white black wire that's being fed into this coil.
coil switch amplifiers, what they're calling it, generic internals. Your, your second signal is your cylinder output. This is gray red wire. This is going to be your 3x signal. And it goes into a, another, again, generic picture. It says amp. I want you to pay attention to though where that 3x signal is coming in. This is your 3x square wave coming into here. It is directly right now going down to this coil switch amplifier, which is responsible. This is going to have each of the transistors inside of it that are controlling each of these coils. So you can see that your sequence right now is going to be done directly from the crank sensor. The computer's not involved at all in firing these coils in this position that it's in right now. At the same time, this 3x signal is sent directly down here. It is also being sent on this purple-white wire right here. And this is known as your reference wire. So 3x signal going to your coils. we got a 3x signal coming in here. Each of those pulses on off square waves are going to represent piston position and RPM. Every pulse is another cylinder approaching top dead center. Computer is going to use that signal as RPM calculation and also for when to fire the injectors. This system is a group fired system. As noted, on these two control wires, and I've done this in a previous video, showing that there are two separate controls, got a green and a blue control wire, and it looks like it's a bank fired system, but it's not. There's one driver inside the computer that controls both of these injector circuits. This is a group fired system. So the computer doesn't need to know, back to that reference wire, which is our, our purple white, the computer does not need to know, that's this one. The computer does not need to know which cylinder on this design, it only needs to know where a cylinder is for injection control. Why? Because it's not sequential. They're fired in a group. I don't need to know which one's which. There's no cam sensor on this engine. It's not necessary. In fact, there's no misfire monitoring at all, so I don't need to know even for the ignition system what cylinder's what. One input for RPM on this computer, and that's this reference one. So picture the situation where we have no spark. Sorry. On this vehicle, which is our case study we're going to be doing, we have good spark and no injection pulse. Good spark and no injection pulse on this design would tell us that our crank sensor is fine. And our concern would be with this reference wire our concern is with this purple white reference wire. That's what provides the RPM signal to the computer for injection pulse. No injection pulse, you need to make sure your input is there. You can have a faulty ignition module on this design, have good spark where we can control the coils, but something gets screwed up in here where it never sends out that pulse to the computer on the purple white wire. This was a common GM failure, not the case with our case study we're going to do, but we need to start by checking this purple white wire when this car is a no start. We're going to do that. Then we're going to focus on the injector controls. This is a shorted injector case study, but I want to show you a uh, direction on what we would go through if you didn't know that. Okay, just to elaborate a little bit more on this design and how the computer is working it, I mentioned that the system, during cranking, crank sensor feeds directly to the coil, computer's not involved. At the same time, that crank sensor signal is there. That's this 3x square wave. It's being sent to the computer, reference pulse, 
Computer looks at the signal, determines RPM, piston position, sends an altered square wave back, and what this altered square wave is going to do is control your timing advance. Okay, and it's as simple as if you have a transistor and you want that transistor to turn off sooner, say this is your, your baseline signal coming in and this would be your altered square wave coming out, where that transistor turns off would be when the magnetic field of that ignition coil collapses, that's when you get your arc, your secondary spark. If you want that to occur sooner or advanced timing, you would simply move the square wave over and turn it off sooner. That's what this EST wire is going to do on this ICM. So how does that work? How does this switching effect work? I'll show you the best I can. Back to this picture, if you look at this, you'll notice that there is a switch right here. So we're focused we're focused right, right in this area right here. And there's a switch and they're, they're calling this a bypass switch. Now, it looks like it's drawn on this diagram as a movable switch. It's not a movable switch. Uh, it's just easier to understand in the diagram that there's a physical switch that's going to move. If you look at this in the position that it's in, you can see, as I was saying before, 3x coming in, 3x coming out, this is my reference pulse going to the computer and at the same time we have direct control on the coil. When the car, when the computer sees an RPM on this reference circuit of 250 RPM, 200 RPM or higher, it says, okay, the car has started and what it does is it switches the module to EST mode. Here's how it does it. The computer is going to send out on this tan black wire right here, it says bypass switch output. The computer sends out a steady 5 volt signal on this tan black wire as soon as the car starts. And what that's going to do, that 5 volts on this bypass switch right here, is it's going to internally switch this in that direction, connecting the white wire now, which if you follow that white wire, that's my spark timing output or my EST wire. And so now what you have is the computer is now in control of the ignition coil sequencing. We've broken that baseline crank signal and that baseline reference pulse, which is still of course being sent that way, but we've broken it away from the coil assembly, the module. We, the computer still needs this input to know where RPM piston position is, so it knows where to affect and where to put the timing at, so that's an important signal, but during running, this is the running mode of a bypass type ignition system. So now you can see with the engine running, the computer's in control of the coils. Bypass ignition, one more time, very generic picture, Cranking, crank sensors directly controlling the coil through the ignition module. Running, that is broken, that connection. However, this reference circuit is still there the whole time and now the computer is able to control the coils with it running, okay? This is important to understand when you deal with no spark situations on a car like this and in fact the injection too, if you lose injection pulse, knowing system designs is important. This is a bypass ignition, this system will function without the computer as far as spark goes. Obviously it will not fire the injectors without this reference pulse. So again, we have good spark on this car. We have no injection pulse. Our focus, of course, is the fuel injectors. This being a Maltec 1 and shorted injectors and common problem. But our focus is going to be on this reference wire and make sure we have pulse there. So that's where we're going to start. All right, one more thing to maybe make this a little bit more clear as far as system designs go is, again, this is a, a bypass ignition system first. And it would be crankshaft signal, to the ICM, that's ignition control module, ICM to the coil, 
And then you have a wire going this way. This is known as your reference wire. And this being your PCM or ECM, ECU, whatever you want to call it. And this one is your EST wire. This would be an older, older GM design. It's known as a bypass ignition. This same setup would be on an older Ford. The only difference would be this is known as the PIP wire and this is known as the spout wire. It's the same design. This being now an older Ford, they still used a bypass type ignition system where the module was in control of the coil during cranking. The PIP wire stood for profile ignition pickup. The spout wire stood for spark output. It was the same exact thing. And if you remember on these designs, when you had a distributor engine and you were checking ignition timing, some of the procedures were on Fords was disconnect the spout connector and check your timing. When you unplug the spout connector, you were simply breaking that spout line between the computer and the module, eliminating the spark advance command. And then you can check your base time. Same thing up here on the GMs, a little bit different though. On the GMs, you would disconnect the bypass wire. And that bypass wire, if you remember, I told you the bypass wire was that five volt signal that would switch the module into module mode. And when you unplug the bypass connector, you were losing the five volts to the ICM and you were forcing it into module mode with the car running and then you could check your base time. So just a little bit on that. Um, take this a little bit further. And a newer GM design would be the crank signal. It goes directly to the PCM. PCM controls the ICM. And the ICM controls the coil. So notice the difference in design with this one compared to this one. If you had a no spark situation, no injection pulse situation, you might treat them a little bit differently with these two designs. On this design, it is possible to have a faulty PCM or a problem over here and still have good spark. On this design, it's not possible. You can see the computer's in control all the time. It's not a bypass system. That crank signal goes directly to the PCM. So how do you know what you're dealing with? You grab a wiring diagram, take a look at where that crank sensor signal goes. If it goes directly to the PCM, it's not a bypass system. If it goes directly to the ICM, ignition module, it's a bypass system. Another one. This is typical uh, Asian, European market. Crank signal goes to the PCM. Most of those older ones they call ECUs, whatever you want to call it. From there, goes to a component known as an igniter which is no different than a module really. And then from that point goes to the coil. So you can see that uh, the Asian market, European market, they've been doing it like this forever. And now the newer design domestics, we're doing it like this. GM, Ford, we're doing it like this. Asian market, Euro market. Chrysler's been unique from the get-go. Chrysler's been doing it like this. Crank signal into the PCM. PCM controls the coil. What is missing in this picture? There is no ignition module. The ignition module is part of the PCM. And this is actually my favorite system to deal with when dealing with a no spark, because if the vehicle comes in as a no spark problem, you can connect the scan tool to this, to this design, and you can command the computer to, to uh, fire the coil, and if you have a no spark problem when it comes in, you put the scanner on a bi-directional mode, you can tell the computer to fire the coil and you have spark, your focus immediately goes to an input problem. And it's just very easy to diagnose when, on this design. I, I really like this design. But th that's just a little bit more on ignition systems, dealing with no sparks, dealing with no injection pulse. You need to know the design that you're working with to give you some direction, to give you some speed. But we're going to try to plug this information into this case study now.